I can't believe this is happening in my home because I have Toman Stauch from Toman the Omen Stauch <laughs> from none other but Germany's answer to Iron Maiden, Blind Guardian, the biggest heavy metal band to ever come out of Germany. They sold millions and millions of records. The guy is filthy rich, as you can see, and everything is <laughs> everything is good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, extremely rich. <laughs> um, man, it's good to see you. It's good a long, you. long time, you know. It's a long time, you know, that we didn't see each other. It's 10 years. Do you remember that? 10 Why? years Why? ago, we saw each other first time. Incredible. That's Nearby right. my hometown. <laughs> in Crayfield. Yeah. Yeah, in Krefeld, right. And then we were, uh, I think, eating in a restaurant in Merbusch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Like that. Yeah, this area, yeah. That was pretty cool, man. I was yeah, laughing my ass off that night. Yeah, it's, we had some great memories. The whole thing is just like, yeah. like, I think, like what was going on with me at the time is I was in a band called Coronatus. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right, and I was having my yeah. my big German success. Right, yes. look at me. Look at my big <laughs> golden schlong. <laughs> and we were working on cold seat, and you wanted to play, or we wanted you to play I in cold play seat. On you know? Everything I wanted to play on everything yeah. that Toman was doing. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, about seven circles at that time. We wanted to work too. The the like the. What is it like? Uh, reunited, you know, something like that. But had yeah, Kai Hansen it never in, happened. Yeah, sorry. You even had Kai Hansen and the keyboard player of Blind Guardian together in a band, which I was going to play bass for, and I came up, and it was just like, oh, yeah, man, this is my hour. Here I go. No, just kidding. We had fun. We had a great time. <laughs> oh, man, that was really cool. That was an extreme extremely great evening really we were laughing our asses off you didn't shut the fuck up not one second <laughs> i know i remember i remember your ex well at that time your girlfriend yeah. we were sitting there you know and she was always with you like todd shut the fuck up now really stop talking you are just laughing all night <laughs> and, and you were like, i don't care baby you know? <laughs> and going on with all your jokes that was so funny, really. That was. Yeah, thank you. I only want to make you laugh. Right? That. Yeah, I knew, I knew. So times change. <laughs> it was like two metal gods meeting. <laughs> You're exactly, man. man. <laughs> meeting of the oh gods. God. We did say that. <laughs> no. We were it was, just it was a lot more low-key than man. that. It was, a, yeah, we had a, I think, yeah. I love making you laugh because, you know, to you, you're a fucking star, man. I know you're a star. And if you can make a star laugh, you're, you're in with them. You're in with these people, the stars. Todd, you need to take different drugs. Something is not I took too with many, you. I took too many drugs today. Way too many drugs, oh. you know. I mean, I was microdosing on this and that and all these things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to better myself, oh. man. I'm trying to further myself. I'm so, trying to do. I'm trying to do the inner work. Okay, so so you 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 stepped back from the totally hot drugs. <laughs> the prescription drugs. Okay. The prescription drugs. Yes. The hard. The, the hard drugs. prescription drugs that I was taking. Yes, it's true. Oh man, this yeah uh, that that is another issue you know about mental health issues that's a bad thing really i really suffer with everybody who suffers by this sickness you know so not easy i have a question for you now in all of this what is it that keeps you going what keeps you alive what are you working on what's coming next what is next for the ex blind guardian drummer toman the omen stel <sighs> <laughs> Stauch. Stauch. We have a Stauch. We have a Stauch. We have a Stauch. We have a Stauch. An echt Stauch. Now, now, what I'm doing at the moment is uh, I'm working on two new power metal bands. 
One is Mentalist. Probably you heard about it. We we do a lot of uh, um, yeah commercial now on Facebook for the release of our debut album. It's called Freedom of Speech, and, and we released already two lyric videos now: now Belief and Freedom of the Press. And, and yeah, I'm really proud of that band. I I learned to know new persons, new new musicians with with that band. That really, you can say, my best friends, my my really best friends. I I never believed in that anymore because Todd, you know my my past, you know my ex bands, Savage Circus, Series Black, and all that stuff, you know. And um, I don't want to say there there were just assholes in the band, you know, for sure not. There were really nice, kind guys in it. But some single persons for me personally, yeah. Finally, became assholes, you know, because we are, uh, we they just use you. Names. We are I'm not sure. naming names. We are not, not naming not. names here because we are better yeah. than that. We are taking the high road because yeah. we we are exactly. on the quest for Tanalorn. Okay, yeah. we're on the quest for Tanalorn. Exactly. And that's a point. Uh, there are just some persons that always use other people to to get the band name higher, you know, and. Uh, use you as, as the person that came from like guardian you know you have the name we have to put it there so that the band will be big like, like, you know like, stuff like, like, I, that. like i'm about to like i'm about to do with you for this interview <laughs> fuck you <laughs> no if i if i wouldn't know you better i would say okay now you make me afraid <laughs> but i know you are not that kind of guy absolutely not and uh yeah, and that's why I am doing this interview now with you too, you know, because we are really big friends. We didn't see each other too much, but we always stayed big friends. And that's the most important thing. I think this we is shared stories, exactly. we shared many stories. You know, I have, I have a very, very, very good friend in Mönchengladbach, you know, uh, nearby my hometown. And we sometimes don't talk for half a year or almost one year sometimes, you know? And then suddenly he calls me or sends me a WhatsApp message or I just do it this way. And then we hang on the phone and then it comes from me or from him. Hey, dude, do you know what? We didn't for talk, talk to each other for about one year now. Uh, one year now. Mm -hmm. But it is like I have been talking just yesterday. <laughs> you know? and, and this is what keeps a friendship up you know what i mean what keeps it alive that is the most important thing if you cannot do that you know it's the same with us then we could not talk as friends anymore now we would be like foreigners to each other but that's the most important thing i think we all know we have our own lives the lives get more complicated we have more issues around us you know so we don't have the time to be there for every friend we have, you know, the same amount of time every day or week or month, you know what I mean? That's a point. But that doesn't mean that this friendship isn't worth the same as the other one. You get what I mean? Right, right. And and there's something that I want to say yeah. in addition to what you're saying, which is so, such a, a beautiful message that you're conveying to the people who are going to be listening to this, is that friendship is is everything in this world. Because even, even if you can't count on your family, at least then you can have friends and you have to find friends. And that's why yeah, yeah. I guess I guess that's why the Internet's a good place to be sometimes, sometimes. But yeah. it's good to go outside and hug a tree, not just hug a tree, but, you know, go outside and, you know, walk and all that. So. But the point I want to say is you always made you always gave me the feeling like like you wanted to spend more time with me, but we couldn't. And it was such a beautiful, beautiful, uh, you know, bittersweet kind of thing that like you always gave me the feeling like I'm sorry I don't have time for you. You know, you always were always very like so gracious and so wonderful. And yeah. I just wanted to thank you for that, for this friendship, because you're a golden god. Mm -hmm. And when you're friends with the golden god, they can also lift you up. You know, <laughs> just just on their just on their name alone, just on the, how you can capitalize on their name. So that's what yeah. it's all about. I'm just kidding. I love you, yeah. man. I, love I know, you. man. I love you too, man. That is really, really 
we've been friends for so long, you know, but with a lot of interruptions from from the times we could meet or talk to each other, from you life. know, from that's life. the point. Uh, yeah, from life, we had to do, we had so much different issues, you with your mental health issues, you know, and I've, I suffered with you always when I heard that, you know, and believe me, when you sometimes sent me your videos, I was not able to watch it all the time because I felt bad about that. You know what I mean? That a good friend of mine is suffering serious sickness. You know what I mean? This is yeah. a big piece of shit. Yeah. And you don't believe, or, or yeah, you for sure believe me when I tell you, but maybe a lot of other people would say, what the fuck is he talking about? Uh, I don't know anybody who is suffering by this mental health issues, you know, but I gained more and more and more people. Is it, is it gained? No, I, I, I learned to know more people every know, yeah. day, every month, every year, you know, that when you talk a little bit more to them, they suddenly come up exactly with that issue and say, Maybe a thing that you don't know, but I'm suffering by mental health issues and uh, I have a psychological problem. You know, I need to take uh, antidepressive, uh, uh, antidepressiva, you say, right? Yeah, antidepressants, like yeah, antidepressants. No? Antidepressants. And antipsychotics, okay. mm -hmm. mood, yeah. mood, sta mood okay. stabilizers as well. Yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. And people tell you this and you are like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? You too? Another friend of mine is suffering by this sickness too. You know that? Oh, I, and I know at least ten other persons who are suffering by this sickness. You know what I mean? That and and it's just like adding this person, adding, adding this person, and and finally, you come to a point where you ask yourself: Is half of the world suffering by this sickness? Is all what's going? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly that, what you mean. Yeah, and this is, and I think this is the. The point where a lot of people that don't want to see the, the truth start asking you, is it something modern we are living in a world? Everybody who has a little psychological problem is now suffering by mental health issues. Ah, come on, man. You don't need to tell me this. And I could really kill people who say this, you know? Well, let's not because say that. We're not going to kill not... the people. I know you say you want to. <laughs> we're going to. No. We're going to. We're gonna we're gonna try to cut that out, maybe, or maybe we can get oh, a, yeah, give an explanation what you meant by that, so that it's not taken out of context, oh, and we're not oh. looking in the in the heavy metal tabloids on on <laughs> blabbermouth on blabbermouth. Uh, Toman Stell <laughs> says you should do this. You should eat beef. <laughs> no, you're right. No, what I wanted to say is that I could restart. Really discussing with people like that say this you know that this is just like a modern shit you know what i mean that people are talking about mental health issues uh i could really start discussing hours by hours to tell them um, oh my friend it is not it is a sickness and this exists more than you would ever like to imagine you know what i mean what are you talking you know but stubborn people, you cannot correct sometimes. You cannot change the meaning or the opinion of a very stubborn person. You know, you cannot sometimes. They, they stay, even if you convince them with words, they will still tell you, no, I don't believe this is bullshit. What can, you, can you hear my phone right now? Can you hear my phone? No. No? Don't you don't hear it? It's not ringing. Oh no! Just a little. a little bit. All right. Well, I'll I'll go unplug it. But um, let's take a let's take a five minute breather, okay? We've been talking yeah. about some heavy issues. We're gonna reconvene. Um, I'm gonna I can pause it. I can do a pause. Yeah, do 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 a pause. Yeah. I'll do uh oh. There's also stop recording, but I don't want to stop recording. I just want to pause it. <laughs> so anyway. Um, let's not take a break. Let's keep going. How's that? Okay. No problem. <laughs> okay. So I think, I think you're great. I think you're a wonderful human being as a drummer. You're, you're out of this galaxy. You come from another planet. You're like one of these guys, like you even have your own style of drumming. I would say there's a Toman Stelch 
uh, style of like a style of double bass drumming that you do so well. Can we tell? Can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think. Uh, while, well, while I like while I play the well, bass for you, while I play the bass for you. <laughs> This is better. You have to play it like this. This is the way to play. It. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Like just like this, just like this, every time, every time. So that's eighties, totally eighties, totally eighties. <laughs> <laughs> no, what 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 should I tell you about my my drumming style? I think the the thing that yeah distinguishes me, right? Is it distinguishes me from just, other? Right. Right, right, right. What distinguishes from, from you? Other, right, right. Distinguish. The thing, the thing that distinguishes me from other drummers is that when I go to the studio and record drums, that usually the producer start directly screaming loud and say, "Wait, wait! I just have to take down the gains of the mic inputs." <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially on the bass drum, because I play with such a hard punch. You know that. Yeah. For a lot of people, it's absolutely not understandable, you know, that they say, how can you do that, you know? But I did it always like that. I think maybe it has to, to do with the circumstance that I teach myself drumming I, by yeah. my own. I taught, I yeah, right. I just, yeah, I taught, I, right, I taught my, uh, uh, my drumming, uh, I taught myself drumming and yeah, my, my drum teacher, I had five, six months or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, it was a jazz drummer. He just showed me the basics. And when he saw that I started to develop my own style, he stopped with me. He said, do you know what? You are already establishing such an own style. And I noticed that, that I don't want to give you lessons anymore. You you have the basics and I understood that you now understood that you can do everything with that. If you know I play an eighth note followed by an eighth note, that you can put a sixteenth note or a triplet or whatever in between, you know, you know you are able to do it. You just have to tell you, okay, it will sound like that. I play a triplet in it and it sounds like that. If I play a sixteenth note, yeah. It is like that, or if I just play this note, it sounds like. And then you know, know what to do. You just have to practice that till it sounds the way you want it. And so I don't want to interrupt you in your own style. If I go on with you, you will try to, to, to catch my style. He said, you know. But I'm a jazz drummer. You want to do heavy metal? I think it's much better you go on with your love for this music. And you develop your own style, you know? And that's what I did from that point. And at that time, I never learned to play double bass. I just learned to play double bass in the beginning with Blind Guardian. Because Andre and Hansi were like, uh, yeah, but here in this song, I think it was, I don't know if I remember, Majesty, I think it was, or something like that. Yeah. You know, later, when I started to play with a double bass, I think. And they said, we need double bass. You you need to learn that. And I was like, fuck, fuck. I never learned that by a teacher, you know. So I did exactly what, what my drum teacher told me. Take it as it need, needs to sound and just play it. Yeah. And when you know it has to sound like that, find a way to play it for yourself. If it works, it works. And that's why I play secret. <laughs> why I play my double bass, the other way around. I'm left foot leading on 16th double bass, okay? Most people don't do that. They are right foot leading with a snare, you know? Like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, the other double bass, yeah? And I'm having the snare on the left foot and not on the right foot. Mm -hmm. And this is untypical. This is really untypical. And Later, when I played with Blind Guardian the first live shows, and we had a lot of songs that had a lot of double bass in it, and you were at the point like, fuck, I play with so much power, I don't have air anymore, you know? You, I had to find out how I can fake my double bass at that point. 
And this brought me to a completely own style at that point. Nowadays, a lot of drummers play this too, you know, but at that time it was very unique to play snare without a bass drum underneath the snare, snare, right foot, right foot, left foot, snare, right foot, right foot, left foot. And that I play in a double bass speed, you know, like, you know, and always with a double hit on the right foot. Yeah? Mm -hmm. this, for this, you need to be very fast on the right foot, you know, to do a double kick, you know. And this is what even my drum students always are working on, and they, they go crazy about this. Like, How can you play so fast on the right foot, you know? And I say, yeah. yeah, but you just have to practice that. You need to practice that. If you practice it enough and you are fast enough on the mm -hmm. right foot, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you will see, you will be able to play the same fucking rhythm, you know? And the yes. good explanation for that is Rainbow's Gold from, from Iron Maiden. That oh, is yeah. exactly, that's a, that's a B-side from, what was it, Two Minutes it's, to Midnight? It's, a, it's on, like... it's on uh, the Power Slave album. Uh, not that, it, that song is not on the Power Slave album, but it's it's one of the B-sides from the was a single of either um because it was uh it was a a song by a by another band that they covered for a b-side uh it was either aces high or two minutes to midnight i don't remember somebody will probably out there I in the think, internet out there in the internet midnight. please help us out who uh the song yeah i think it was two minutes to midnight and the b-side rainbow's gold has this rhythm you know, and that is all played with the right foot, yeah? yeah. And because of the 16th double kicks, when you try to play that in a very fast way, even faster than it is there on the on the on the B side from the single, you will be able to, to do that fucking double kick. You know, right. that that's a very good practicing song for that. You know, and I tell all my students always again and again, and and then they do it, and they say, "Yeah, it really helped. It really helped." You know, it's it's pretty cool. It's it's a good thing. But I love this at the, at the time when it got released. You know, I was like, "What the fuck is this? What is he playing there?" You know, and then I wanted to play that, and maybe that, that is what made me play so fast on the right foot. You know, the double kings. Right, right, right. I don't know. I want to tell you how much I love you as a friend. I just, you know, sometimes I sporadically throughout the day, you know, if I, I'll have a burst of love, a burst of joy, of elation that I want to share with another person. I'm so glad that we're doing this. I'm so glad that we're talking and that people out there can see, hey, man, this friendship is real. I may have written some horrible things on the Internet, but you know what? Tom and Stalk is still my friend. <laughs> ah, come on, Tom. What you have written about now for you, man. What you have written on the internet, man, I saw so much people writing bullshit on the internet, but so much bullshit and really so much bullshit that you usually have to really cancel the friendship with the people, you know, uh, and I still didn't do it, you know, but it doesn't matter. Everybody has his own time, you know, where he maybe he writes bullshit, then he has a good time again. Everything is fine, you know. So don't worry about that. If somebody doesn't like it, what you what you what you write, then he should step away from you, and that's it. Right, but the no thing problem. is, I, I was you trying to I mean? do I was trying to do like stand up comedy and spoken word yeah. on on Facebook, and I was using a lot of like uh, sarcasm and humor, and it didn't it doesn't come across at all on the internet, and it's too bad because hopefully technology will get better that we can start to express ourselves in ways where we won't be so misunderstood. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. But this will happen always again and again because we are surrounded by different people, different kinds of people. You so, want to say we? You no, 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 no. Let's get breast. Let's get down to breast. <laughs> you want to say we are surrounded by assholes sometimes, also, right? Yeah, so also, that yeah. can happen. Yeah, for sure. Yes, exactly. Uh, this includes right. different different kind of people. Includes assholes. As also very kind people. You right. know, you're, you're and, a very uh, kind person. You're a very kind. Thank person. you. You too. You're a very kind person because in the heavy metal world, I met a lot of machos, okay? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's right. right. I know what you mean. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I would be exactly the opposite of that because 
I think Blank Guardian was in general pretty uh, uh, well known for that, you know, to yeah. be the more uh, uh, down to earth band, you know, not not arrogant or something like that. Always support their own fans, you know, and I think that's that's really important. And that's the same thing we are doing with Mentalist and Dawn of Ember now. Dawn of Ember, by the way, is the, my second um, power metal band, you know, that I'm doing with uh, Mick Butcher from from Bavaria and uh, with Benedict Siniak, uh, who played in in um, Oh my God! Now I forgot the band name again. <laughs> Shit! Ah, ah, this progressive band. Um, oh, oh, oh! Mekong oh Delta. Mekong Delta, exactly. Yeah, that's the way he played, you know. And a very, very good guitarist too, you know. And incredible, really. Yeah. I have and a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah bass, bass guitar is now uh, Ilka Ersin from Film Calls playing the bass guitar now. But uh, yeah, maybe maybe we will have uh, some changes in the band already. That's that's the big problem because a lot of things are not working well there at the moment. Uh, from the timing, you know, from the input that comes from the musicians, um, not meant in a bad way, but I, I, but I think it it seems to be a problem with a, with a normal day jobs that they're having. You know, that are keeping them too busy. So probably, yeah, I have to talk with our singer from Dawn of Ember that we maybe have to split with him because it doesn't work anymore. He's a nice guy. He's one of our best friends. You know what I mean? But we don't get along working wise with him. You know are you I mean? talking he about the bass? Are you talking bring... about the bass player? Oh, no, I'm talking about the, the singer. About oh okay. Oh okay. Car. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, I, yeah. I'm you know yeah. I'm a, I'm a business guy. You know I'm I'm always checking. <laughs> always checking. Are you wanted to join already? Yeah. <laughs> I, you never know, Todd. You never know what would come up. What, you know. What fun Maybe would that be? You and me yeah. being on stage, okay? The fucking whacking. All right. We'll be a whacking, <laughs> acting like wacky, wacky, whacking. <laughs> Someday, man. Someday, this will happen too. I'm pretty sure. Bring me on stage on Wacken. We... I'll play with you, dude. Yeah. And if it is just as a guest musician or something like that, right. doesn't matter, right. you know. I need, I need yeah, that, man. No, I need that. <laughs> cool. We will get that done, man. No, no, for sure. You just, you just have to move your ass over to Wacken then. I'll, I'll play, okay. Exactly, I'll play exactly whatever it is that you want me to play. You know, like um songs like um like songs from Wizards and Warriors, like. Anyway, that's that's from um. I wanted to play that for you for a long time. It's. Can you tell me why you played? this so bad can you go back and practice this first before you play <laughs> can i do this is, it, is this better for you do you like this better is this, is this your kind of music your kind of music this is what you listen to this is what the kids are listening to a little bit more progressive <laughs> Are crazy. No, I don't say it. That was a little bit of Devo. I put I put some Devo on the end of that because I grew up with Devo. I was listening to Devo records when I was five years old. Does that explain anything? And I knew about Zappa at a very early early age and Howard Stern. Okay. Okay. So let's let's do a song together. Let's do a song to let I don't know Valhalla, but I know that Valhalla goes on for a very long time. What's the longest Valhalla in history? Oh, don't you have questions, my friend? Whatever. I, I tell you, though, can be wrong. I don't know what was the longest, but I think that one of the longest for sure was on the Coburg DVD recording. You know, that, that was for sure one of the longest uh, Valhalla with uh, the public, uh, the, 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 how do you say it? Uh, oh, my God. Publikumsspiel. Ah, audience game. Audience game, exactly. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that was pretty cool. And then I 
get in with the drums, you know, and when they sing, go on singing Valhalla, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Valhalla, deliver us. Valhalla, deliver us. You can see I'm really not a fan. No, just kidding. I love the band. They're great. Okay. It was a nice evening. You crazy idiot, eh? man! Really, you are so crazy. <laughs> Everybody who's watching this now, who saw Todd laughing now, this is what happened ten years ago in the restaurant, and this from the first to the last minute we met that day. <laughs> you crazy one, man! Really, that was a great time for sure. So I have a lot of song ideas for you, for your bands, for Mentalist, for Dawn of Amber. I have a lot of songs that I've written okay. that are going to be ready for your band because I'm going to come in as a fully fledged. I'll be a I'll be a band member. I'll be like a like a like a fourth, like a quarter of the band. Uh, you know, I'll get the quarter of the earnings of the band as well because I'll be writing the songs. Um, so all that is great. Thanks, thanks, man. Thanks for hooking me up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so no. <laughs> I even don't react anymore on what you are talking to, man. <laughs> you try, just try to get me that way, man. Right. <laughs> and tomorrow I would be in, um, how do you say, in ex explaining um, uh, issues or what do you say? Uh, in front of my my band members, you know, like guys. Uh, yesterday in the interview, I said something wrong. We have a new right, basis right. now. Right, exactly. <laughs> you have a new basis now. He lives in New York. He's going to be able to record it with with. He has a Scarlet M box, one a Scarlet box that he's going to plug his guitar into. Not his Schmeckel. He's not going to put his Schmeckel into it. He's going to put he's going to put uh, the cable, the with that goes from the guitar, all that, everything. <laughs> Everything. Francisco. Oh, wait. How are we, this, how are we doing on so time? Funny, are we dude. making this? Is this a legendary interview yet? Are we making this legendary? This is totally legendary. I think in how long are we talking now? Five, um, minutes. five minutes. Five minutes. We've been talking for five minutes. This five is the minutes. first. This, this is just five minutes. You mean five minutes more? What I did, is, what I did is I, I sort of tried to go into your brain and throw off the time and space continuum, and now you don't know what day it is or who you are. I'm gonna teach you the drums. I'm gonna teach you how to play the drums now. I'm your, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you. Okay. 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 I don't know how to play. I don't know how to play the drums, but let me tell you something. I want. I know a drummer named Toman Stauch in an alternate universe. Okay, there's another Toman Stauch, and what he has on Skype is something called the Toman Stauch Drum Chamber. What's that about? Toman Drum Chamber. This is my YouTube channel, where I play old Blind Guardian songs and uh, even songs from other bands. You know that I really love to listen to. In the early years to today, you know, everything from yeah, pop, rock, metal, power metal, speed metal, uh, yeah, and let, let, and yeah. all the Black Guardian songs, you know, that I played with them, and uh, yeah, probably, probably I will play. I'm not sure if I will do that. Um, a lot of people ask now if I would like to play a song where Fred is playing, the new drummer, you know just to listen how this will sound when I play it. But I think they developed their style so much, you know, and they changed it so much, in my opinion, you know, that it, it wouldn't make sense anymore to, to listen to my drumming over this because Fred does everything fine for this change that did, you know, and he plays even very, very similar to me sometimes from the style, yeah, because... Uh, as the band told me later, that they, they always tried also to keep my style anyhow in the band, you know, even with Fred, you know, 
of course, a lot of things are different, and he has his own style. A lot of things he tries to not covering, uh, yeah, like to interpretate, or how do you say in, in English? Interpret. To just to interpret. Okay, he, he tries to interpret it the same way as I would probably have done that, you know, at least in the early years when he started with them, he did it, you know, nowadays they, they change so much that you cannot com compare that anymore, you know, and, and if it would make sense to, to do that, I don't know, I don't know if I even would be able to play these fast double bass kicks he plays because he plays a completely different technique that makes him being able playing faster double bass than I. If he would have to do it the same way as I do, with full power, he would be limited at any point too, for sure, you know? And that's what I always said. I never wanted to be the fastest double bass drummer. I wanted to be the drummer who has a special punch in his playing style. Yeah. And I think that's what people love me for. And I don't need more, you know? And, and what people love me for too was always that I... Never wanted to be that, yeah, that guy that where people say, Look, what a great technician, what he can all play in different styles. No, that the people always supported me for, for, or loved me for supporting the songs I played to, right? You know, right. try to get the best out of the song, you know. I could have played so much more complicated stuff sometimes to do our songs, but I never wanted. Yeah, and even in discussion with my band members in Black Guardian times, yeah, with Andre, who was the main songwriter, you know, he sometimes when I played drums, he said, "Ah, Tom, no, I don't like that. What you want to play there? Can you play something fast forward?" You know, and I was like, "Ah, do you mean this?" And then, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, man, that's it, that's it." You know. And that's the way we worked, you know, and it was never a question of uh, hey, can you play something more complicated that people will not get their mouth closed when they see you play anymore. You know what? Yeah, we never yeah, wanted yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. we would be like, oh, look what Tobin is playing there. I could never play it. No, it was just like, wow, it sounds killer to that part. You know, this was always my intention, playing drums to songs. In every band, in every band, okay? Sometimes it was the way the songs were written by others, other people in the band, uh, and they wanted me to play this and, and this style. And then I always told them, better give me the freeness, you know, the, the yeah, the, the free way expression from my drumming it will be better for the band than to just play what you want me to play because it will never be true honest you know what i mean when i played this that's the point then you can take better another drummer if you want me as a drummer you know why you take me exactly because of that style and if people try to push me in any way, in any corner, yeah, I always say, are you sure you want me as a drummer? You know why you ask me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's the point. And I think this is really important. If somebody wants me to have as a drummer in the band, he asks me exactly because he wants my style and my ideas and not to just play any fucking pattern that he programmed on a drum computer. Okay, that's the point. So I, I have some songs, Tomin. I, I, this is all joking aside. I have four songs, okay? Four yeah. classic metal songs that I'm sure Tomin would go to town on, right? Okay. What do okay. I do? Do, do, I, do I, should I be able to pay you? Or what is, what is expected? What are you looking for so the thing can happen? Usually, it is like that, that I don't do anything besides Bob Ember and Mentalist anymore because I'm so fucking busy with both bands that I feel already bad being so busy with Mentalist 
at the time being, that I didn't find that time for Dawn of Ember anymore that I wanted, usually, for the band, you know? Yeah. So, and Dawn of Ember started even earlier than Mentalist, but because of what I told you, even with our singer, with Carsten, you know, who is, as I said, I love this guy. He is a great friend of mine, you know. Mm -hmm. But even under friends, you have to come to the conclusion it doesn't make sense anymore to work together when we don't get forward with the stuff we are working on. You know what I mean? Because your normal day life is keeping you so busy that you will not find the time. And I'm not, I'm not upset with the person who is for earning money in a normal day life with a normal job doing a job up and doesn't have time for music anymore or as much as we need for the November. Uh, but I think it's also sometimes a question of priorities. You know what I mean? Some people, and, and that, that is maybe the point. Carsten is a very, very young guy compared to the rest of the band, you know. And uh, maybe some things for him where he could take maybe a little bit more time for the band is not important for him anymore at that point because it's more important maybe for him to meet with his other guys in his age. You know what I mean? Yeah. And drink a beer and play some, some computer games. You know what I mean? It's his life. I can understand that he likes it, you know. But it would not be my thing anymore. I mean, Andre from Blind Guardian is a very big computer gamer too, you know. He loves to play computer games. He's a completely, uh, yeah, freak, you know, in this way, you know. Right. There was he, a lot of, there's a lot of... Could I, could I go as far as to say that Blind Guardian... Maybe I'm not going to say that it attracts nerdy people, but we have some themes about um, Lord of the Rings. Even before the films came out, you had several albums that had songs about Lord of the Rings. Is that not true? Yeah, this is exact, exactly totally true. <laughs> and yeah, but this was because especially Hansi was the big reader in the band, you know, who read all the books, and I was never a big reader, you know. I, I, I love more watching movies, you know, but not, I, I always got a headache from two big books, you know what I mean, <laughs> reading them. Uh, and Andre, he read a lot of the rings too, I know, and, and Marcus is a big reader too in the band, but he was not the, the guy who usually wrote any lyrics, you know, that, that was more Hansi's. Uh, part, you know, so um, but we all loved fantasy anyway, you know so, yeah, we were how do you say we, we, how do you say it in English, we, we were, we agreed what would, uh, what would completely you mean as a band. you agreed, you agreed, yeah. yes we all agreed on this you got, uh, you all got along uh, you, were, you were childhood yeah. friends, right yeah yeah, more or less. Trying to get. Yeah, we. I know Andre from school. You know, short before he went from 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 the normal Realschule at that point. You know, where I was too. And there he was still practicing with Markus Dirk, the the guitarist, and uh, who sang Symphonies of Doom, that with a high voice. You know, uh, on the on the first demo tape. Um, he. He was the guitarist and one of the best friends from Andre at that time, and still he is. Um, meanwhile, he's a he's a good friend from all the band, you know, the band members. But uh, at that time, they were practicing in school, you know, in a school room. After school, they could play there with the band, practice there. And I was always there as, as the young drummer. And I always wanted to be in that band, you know. I was like, hey, Andre, take me in the band, take me in the band. He was like, yeah, but with what, you know? And you can come to listen, you know. I said, I will, I will practice an instrument. Yeah, I want to play guitar. And then it started the shit that you can read everywhere on, on Wikipedia, even, where, where Andre tried to to teach me guitar and that I practiced it at home and I came back and he said, you didn't practice. Man, you even don't keep your thumb behind the, uh, how is it here, the, the fretboard, you know? 
know, you have to push the, the thumb to the back of the fretboard, you know, what I try not to get a rest. Forget that. And then I was in the rehearsal room down where the drum set from his, at that time, current drummer was standing. And I said, may I play on that, you know? And he was like, ah, our drummer usually doesn't like when somebody plays on it. I don't care if you are careful, sit behind it and yeah. do it. Very good. And then I started playing there, and then I started playing there, and I started playing directly any rhythm, any basic rhythm. Never, I played drums before, you know, but I was like, like boom, bop, boom, boom, bop, boom, you know, like that. And Andre was like, oh, you never played drum before? And I said, no, man, you have to play drums. Drums. You have talent for this, you know. That's how everything started, you know. Then Andre told me you have to convince your parents that you played. I said they will kill me. That makes too much noise, you know. Where should I practice it? I don't have a, a room for that. You can play in your cellar in the house of your parents, you know, like that. And yeah, that's what what happened then, you know. And then I bought a drum set from the money we earned from the uh, confirmation 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 party. What you? Confirmation party, exactly. Yeah, in Germany, you get usually money for that, you know, from from the family around. Right. I yeah, had a bar mitzvah. Collected... I, I had a bar mitzvah. A, a what? A bar mitzvah. What is it? They don't have it in Germany. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bastards. No, but uh, yeah. Yeah, with that money, I, I I bought it a first drum set then, and I played it in the in, in the cellar of my parents' house. You know, it was incredible. That was such a great time starting that. You know, then I took that jazz drummer, you know, to take lessons, to take class yeah, for about five or six months, something like that. Yeah, and then I tried to teach my my own stuff. You know. That's how I started everything. And then I asked again in Andre's band at that time. And I think at that time they were called already Zero Thought or something like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then I asked them, and now, now I play drums. Do you take me in your band? He was like, ah, come on, man. Just started, you know. Yeah. But almost half a year later already, Andre was so convinced from my skills on drums that when he took Hansi as a school friend in, in, into the band as a singer and bass player, uh, and Hansi wanted to play always just bass guitar and not, not guitar and not, not singing. But then Andre said, No, no, if you play guitar, the bass guitar, you can do it, but I need you as a singer. You have such a great voice, you know. <laughs> yeah, then. Uh, Hansi was always like, nah, come on, don't forget about Tolman, you know, he's forget that. Uh, he, he's a young guy, much too young, and he just started, you know, and Andre said, ah, don't worry, I think that guy can really de develop very fast his skills, you know. He's really good, and he's hot, you know, to do that. And he trusted in me, I must really say. And then, and then Hansi said, yeah, I don't know. Let, let's make a kind of uh, audition with him, you know, he should come here, play some songs with us. And then I did. <laughs> and it was just, I don't, I don't know, almost half a year, seven, eight months after I started playing drums, you know, and then, and I, don't, I will never forget that. Then we were sitting upstairs in Andre's room in the house of his mom. And then we were, what do you think, Hansi? What do you think? Take him. Should we take him? Is he good enough? And he like, yeah, he he plays pretty well, but he's stupid. <laughs> like that, you know. He's, he's too young. He's stupid. You know, Hansi's Hansi's uh, uh, Hansi's comedy skills, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And then finally, they told me, yeah, come on, you're in. But you really have to practice out. And I gave everything. I gave, gave everything to be in there, you know. It was a, was a great start. It was a great time. You know? this is Still thankful for that. Yeah. I, I would not be that what I am nowadays, you know, without blank God, for sure. You know, that is the point.
I can even say, yeah, even not without Andre. You know, Andre was the guy who really supported me. And I must really say that. And we were, I don't, I don't know, if, if we had some hard times sometimes, but we were one team, even in the band later, in the later years, you know. We were always, in a musical way, we, we understood each other more or less blind. Just some point, some part, some this way, said, ah, played different, you know. But uh, usually when I played something, he was always like, okay, that sounds pretty cool, but can you maybe add a, a hit on the snare there at on this counting time or something like that, you know. And then, yeah, everything was perfect for us later. You know? That was, was a pretty cool time. It's a wild ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's quite a journey that is quite a journey through the dark <laughs> that's right <laughs> so i think what we can oh, do is we can we can say in closing this is a love letter to the fans and the friends of toman stelk toman the omen yeah. stelk for your friends, for the people who love you, the people who've stuck by you for years, this is a tribute to them. This interview that we're doing is for them. Yeah, it's it's for everybody. That is for us. That is for us. It's for us. I mean, really, it's it's to it's to further it's to further it's to further our careers, so I can start playing on your next album. Okay, you hear drums now, right? This is, on the table. Can you play drums to this? <laughs> no. Too complicated for me. My that, drum that, teacher that, at is, the beginning. You know, the thing is, that. you know, when you apply for McDonald's and you have a PhD, yeah. you have a Dr. Arbite and you show up to McDonald's and they tell you, I'm sorry, we can't hire you. You're overqualified is my life. That's my life. That's what I have to go through every day with the heavy metal community. OK, I'm just telling you right now, I've had to deal with a lot of assholes. I'm not going to say where, you know, where. Yeah. A lot of them, you know what they're like. They have their attitudes. It's a certain place. Not even going to mention them. And you know what I'm saying. You know. Yeah. It's the same thing with me. I told you in a private way about some people, you know, that I had my issues with. And, uh, yeah, you will not change this. It's it's sad sometimes that it happened to be like that. But uh, that's life, man. That's life. But that's life. But you know, a person that we love so much that I wanted you to mention, if you know him, you can we, we can pay tribute to him right now, the legendary Kai Hansen. What can you tell me? Are, <laughs> are we going to get an interview with Kai Hansen through you? Who, where do we, what do we have to do now? What's next? Kai Hansen is a funny, great, kind, very professional, and very talented person and guitar. That's all I can say. This guy, I think you can give him an old, I don't know, an arm of a tree, you know, you can give him and put a, a little string on it and you will still play a solo on that, you know. <laughs> this guy is incredible, really. Can you imagine if Kai Hansen and myself got together in a room and started making music? What would that be? It would be called improv metal. It's called free metal. Yeah, that would be improv, improv metal. Exactly. Exactly this is what would be going to happen. Exactly. And this is the difference between Andre and Hansi. Uh, between Andre Orbisch and Andre is always the the hat guy, you know, who need oh, I will play my soul this way, I need this melody, and ah, oh, wait, uh, then he starts thinking, how can I go on in the solo, you know, and Kai Hansen just takes the fucking guitar and makes that, you know, and you say, wow, that sounds great, you know, and Andre does the same, but just, just he comes to the point on a different way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, constructing his and as I said, Andre for me is still one of the of the best guitarists in, in this world. Not technical from the ideas, his melodies, especially in the early years. I loved them. 
I love them always. You know, he's one of the most melodical guitarists I've ever listened to. I must really say, uh, I really love that. And for me, he lost this attitude in the in the in the last albums of Black Guardian. On at the edge of time, it is pretty really cool. But for me, for my, my in my personal opinion, okay. He he lost that. You know what I mean? This magic on the on the guitar. He's he he maybe got much more professional and technical wise even much better. But for me, what was the most important in Black Guardian always the big choirs, the very big melodical choirs that you listen to one time and you can sing it the next time. All the day with the new stuff. You cannot do that anymore. Yes. And it is it's, too yeah. too much head music already for me. You know, yeah? for me personally, it is already too much head music. You would have to listen, I don't know, a thousand times to that album till you will be able to sing that chorus from that song. Yeah, right. I talked already with Andre about it, and I told him exactly this. You know, I'm I'm always honest with that, and he was like, "You are crazy! You are crazy! How can you say that?" Listen to that song, listen to that song. And he was playing the songs again to me. And I said, Andre, I'm sorry. It, for me, it is it's like that. I don't get it in my head anymore as a majesty script for my requiem, imaginations from the other side. You know what I mean? Valhalla. These things, they, they might be, or they may be much easier. And maybe with the, the the nowadays side of view much less complicated but complication is not everything you know what I mean that's what I think I think it must be catchy in your ear always easy simple simple you know what I mean simple exactly. einfach simple. einfach exactly yeah I know, now you can tell me, then you can listen directly to German Schlager music, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, no, that's not what I'm saying. Even in a more complicated way, you can keep it catchy, you know what I mean? Right. Right. That's it. And that is what Blind Guardian had in the early years. And I love this. And that, is what, and that was what Blind Guardian was standing for, in my opinion. You know, that's a point. Okay. Okay. And now they lost it. I'm sorry. I, in my opinion, they lost it. I don't want to say anything bad about it because they are really still very successful and I'm happy to, to see that Yeah, because they really deserve it. You can do whatever you want, but in my personal opinion, that should not have changed that style so much. You know, to a more progressive way. It's, it's, I feel a little bit sad about it sometimes. You know what I mean? Sure. That sure. they did that. Yeah. I understand because you know if I was the producer of Blind Guardian for their next album, you know, yeah. you know me. So I would say that they would go back to old literature, find old literature, do things that they did in the olden days, go back to the studios, check it out, you know, go to the old studios, get the old feeling, pick up the old guitars, f feel it, feel it again, feel it again and do exactly. it. Yeah. yeah. But I know that Blind Guardian is the band for this. They always want to develop. I know that. And especially Andre and Hansi, they both are very special in this. You know, they, they never want to, to stuck, you know what I mean, on any point. They want to grow. Yeah. <sighs> Growing for me means to keep the same style and just do different songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is for me growing too. But they need to change something really hard to know, okay, we developed now. We really did something new. You know what I mean? At any point, they, they ask them, what are we doing here? Now we record already Tales from the Twilight World, Somewhere Far Beyond, Imaginations, Night for the Middle Earth. They're all different. But the basics, 
style with a big choir and the great melodies from Andre in it and partly with orchestra stuff. This is what they all have in common. You know what I mean? In these four. Oh, and what they also have in common is your signature drumming and also the signature singing of Hansi because Hansi's yeah. voice, Hansi doesn't sound like anybody else. There's nobody else on this earth exactly. that sounds like Hansi exactly. Kirsch, right? Exactly. Yeah. The only guy I ever knew that I can touch Hansi in his voice timbre, timbre you know, yeah. is Jens Carlson from Savage Circus. Uh, and pursue. he's the only one who ever touched him and where people said, wow, it's so extremely comparable, you know, what they are doing there. You know, they sound so similar, you know. Hans doesn't see it by, by himself. He says, no, he doesn't sound that much as me. And I said, Hansi, are you crazy? He sounds extremely as you, you know. <laughs> but yeah, there you see how different, how different the opinions of people are. You know, that's the point. <laughs> okay, man. This has been a great talk. Yeah, was really, really great talk to you, man, too. And uh, a long time no seeing anymore. And uh, finally, we made it. <laughs> we made it. We made it. We made we it. We managed happen. to do that. We yeah. made it happen. We did it. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're, we're friends. We're going exactly. we're, we're gonna to reach exactly. out to Kai Hansen. We're going to start yeah. uh, a musical project for free metal and improv yeah. metal. Uh, it's going to be great. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the way it should be. Yeah. So I love you very much. You're, you're one of my best friends from the German days. From my, my time living in Germany, you're, yeah. you're, 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 you're the too, hot, man. you're, you're a big highlight, man. I mean, my, my marriage was... I will was, not marry you. My I marriage was one... My I'll marriage was... You. I will marry my girlfriend someday, but not you. <laughs> I was going to give you my, I was going to give you my old wedding ring that it says Todd and Valentina, and I was going to give it to you. What do you think about that? You can hold it. You can be like Frodo. It's like Lord of the Rings. Get it? <laughs> uh, will I... And will I pay my my hundred eleventh birthday then too? Oh. I'll pay I'll pay for the shipping. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> really cool, man. Really cool. It was great talking to you. Great talking to you too, man. Love talking yeah. to you. <laughs> Love you too, man. So, and um, you get yeah. your fuck. Fucking mental health issues done. You know what I mean? Really. I really wish you all the best for this. All you, you know, know that you didn't know that I had a you didn't know that I had a lot of healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I did a lot of healing. I'm a different yeah. person than I was back then. But you were stuck yeah, by me. You were you were you were by me all the time. I know, man. And that that that, uh, that it was really, really hard for you some time before you know yeah. you were really, really suffering man really I, suffering i, I actually that's went what to i said let, yeah that's what i was talking about in the beginning you know that i i really suffered so much just hearing about or seeing you you know in videos where you talked about that and and you were in a mood sometimes man that i said wow what the fuck is going on there you know Bah. I'm, horrible, sorry. I'm horrible. very sorry for that. I'm very sorry. No, you don't need to feel sorry for that. You know, you have that sickness or you had it, you know, and you just managed to be much, much better nowadays, you know, with that. But I think you will never heal it completely, right? That's the point. Uh, that's it the, will that's always... the point. I think I'll always have this gift. Yeah. The gift. Yeah, it will always accompany you, you know, in your life. That's the point. Yeah. In in any way, in a in a in a harder way or in a lower way, you know? Uh, One last thing. Do you remember the picture of me sitting on the bed in my underwear with the pills in my mouth like a dinosaur? Uh, no. The, I'll send it, I'll send it to you. More. I'll send it to you because I had the pills in my mouth and I was sitting on the bed and I was sitting in my underwear and you, you're like, you're the craziest bass player in the world. Of course. Now I know it. 
But yeah, 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 right. You sent it. Was it not? Did you not send it even over Facebook in the Facebook yeah. Messenger? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, no? yeah, 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 right. Yeah, I remember so, that. So, you know, then oh, I was, okay, I was yeah. taking, I was taking four different kinds of medications and I was working as an English teacher, playing Coronatus, doing Tervingi after that, you know? So I had some yeah. of the German metal bands, you know? I even auditioned for Leaves Eyes and I'm not going to say what those guys were like. Incredible, incredible. Did you not have this issue too with this, um, with that Polish, Polish guy? Uh, I'm, not, the... I'm not gonna go into that because we made up. I made up with them. I made up with them, okay. and okay. Uh, because I was a little bit crazy too, because I left my bass there because I thought I was gonna be playing bass on their next album, and we talked about it in this that. But you know what? I'm too experimental for that rigid. You know, sorry, it's really, really, really like boxed in, really like bo really boxy, you know, only in this heavy metal, only true metal. Yeah, and yeah. we spoke about this before about you got to listen to stuff other than metal, right? Exactly. That is right. And that's what the problem was. Yeah. Incredible, man, really. Yeah. Sometimes we are too good for this world, Todd. Believe me. Yeah, it is like that. I lost, a, I lost a friend. I lost a friend who I would have loved for you to meet because his name was Martin Winkler, and he's the guy who played guitar on the Trooper video that I did. You remember that one? Okay. I'll send it to yeah, you again. Yeah, the guy, yeah. he, took, he took his life, and he was so talented. He, like, Just like us. Suicide. Yeah. Suicide. Yeah, what do you think what, what happened to a friend of mine not long ago? Seven, eight weeks ago, something like that. Yeah. Was a was a drum drum student, and he suffered by mental health issues too, you know. And he was was so happy. He was together with Jen. Um, she got pregnant from him, and then she lost their common child in December last year. And in January. I write to him and tell him about my split with Allah. And, and then he said, like, oh, Cohen, fucking hell. Don't tell me this. Not again, you know. Not again, man. And then I said, we really need to meet and to talk someday again, man. It's a long time ago now, you know, because right, he stopped right, taking right. lessons. Right, right, right. Right. No? No? right. And we just wanted to talk and he liked to do to take pictures you know he said i come to your new rehearsal room you know to your to your studio and then i will take cool pictures of you i will do it for free as a friend and i said yeah and come with jenny then we can go to eat or to drink something anywhere and he said yeah i will do that i will be so happy with her i will marry her someday told me do you believe me and i said i know you crazy guy you will marry her and then and in december last year she lost she lost her This 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 was before, okay? When they when they learned to know each other, in December she lost the child. In January I, I told him about the split, the separation with Allah. Now again, and he was like, "What well, I told you now?" Like, "No, don't tell me." And I said, "We wanted to meet, man, for photos. When do we?" I said, ah, "I'm really busy at the moment, and now the shit Allah here with the separation. I'm not in a good mood. Let's do it now, day." I said, "So I wanted to push it to." let's say march april something like that you know yeah 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 and then and then on when was it one month ago or something like that five weeks ago okay yeah this will have was to be the, the yeah was, this will have to be the, the last September. story yeah yeah what's that was the, you know yeah the, the funeral right because he drove with his car against the tree Jesus. that's it And and Jenny, his his girlfriend, sent me the picture of the car. What the police took of this car, man. When you would have seen this picture, I was crying immediately. Really, I was crying. I was completely done. That was such a fucking bullshit, man. Incredible. And the best is when he took lessons with me. He was such a crazy guy. He put always this. Pippi Langstrumpf, you know, right? Yeah, Pippi, Pippi Langstrumpf. Yeah. Exactly, with the red hair. He had, mm -hmm. uh, how do you say, peruke? A wig. Peruke? A wig, yeah. He had 
exactly this one. And he was sitting in front of my rehearsal room, the old one in Duisburg, still where I live now. He was sitting down waiting for me. And I, I come and say, what, how do you look? And he like, <laughs> like that, you know, doing jokes. He was such a comedian. And then he loved to take videos. He recorded a video how he forgot to take the, the money for my drum classes he took with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, you have your next drum student. I will drive to the Sparkasse, he said, and I will pick up the money and then I come back and I call you and you come down and just pick up the money. And I said, yeah, okay, let's do it like that. Mm -hmm. And then he went to the Sparkasse, was searching the Sparkasse around. The bank. And he took this video. Uh, uh, no, he was uh, at the Sparkasse, the, the bank. Right, exactly. yeah, right, right, the bank. Yeah the bank to take money from the automatic, you know, with the, mm -hmm. with the car. Yeah. And then he gave his mobile phone to a young girl and said, here, film me. And then he was taking video of the thing, how he takes the money, like, oh, oh, oh I am here. Oh, Tobin is waiting for me. He needs the money. Oh, my fucking God, I found the a spark castle. Okay, I have to take the money. <laughs> you know, and like fast forward. And this was a Pippi Langstrom thing. And then he's in the car and he's like, oh, oh, finally I have the money. Finally I have the money. So I have to drive to Tom now. He's waiting for me. He's waiting like that, you know, in the car. And then he takes a bottle on the on the next seat, pisses during the drive in the bottle, puts it aside, and is like, okay, there's a cool band, and puts a CD in, and oh, I'm thirsty, and takes the bottle away, pissed in. And wants to drink it, man. I left my ass off. I quit that anymore. That was so funny. And this video I found after his death, and some days ago, said, "Oh, look, this is from Andreas." And I watched it. Thought I was crying immediately. That was horrible. It was, it was so horrible to watch this. To know this person is gone, simply gone. You will never talk to him again. You know what I mean? And we, we had plans to meet that you would take pictures from me and all that. But that was hot. That pulled me down so much the situation. Really. Believe me. That was really, really, really tough. You're, shit. you're a very sensitive person and you're very empathic. Uh, oh. You feel, you feel oh, yeah, for I... other, you feel for other people very oh, strongly. Just as yeah. I do, you yeah. know, just yeah. as many yeah. artists do. You are a true artist. You are you are yeah. legendary. With your video that you did there, I just started watching this. I was sitting there like... My film, my film, right? My documentary. You were watching yeah. my documentary film. Yeah, I just... Uh, I didn't... I never watched it completely. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. Fuck what's going on there, you know? That was really hard to see that man. And I was immediately, I was crying. You are, you are my friend, you know what I mean? You know how much I suffered seeing you like that? That's horrible. Yeah, that's a big bullshit. You know? But yeah, you cannot change it. You know, that's the point. Okay, my friend. Anyway, I think we, did no, great. I we, think we had a this. great, great work today. We had a great time. It was great talking to you. Great to see you again. I love you. Mwah! You're the best. Mwah. You too, uh, man. And I can't wait to see you again with your new wife. And, <laughs> uh, you know, new everything, uh, new drum chamber, or everything yeah. like that. And if people want to hire you, what should they do? How do you get students? Don't you want some students? Yes, yeah, students is cool for online and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, promote, yeah, yourself. Promote. Cool, yeah. promote yourself. Promote. Promote yourself. Promote yourself. Yeah, I'm giving. I'm doing. I'm giving drum lessons online with uh, four camps, you know, on Skype, and uh, I work with a special program where I can include four cam versions, four cam angles, you know, no, four camps with different angles, uh, like one cam picture, you know, and and then I can take it as a uh, in Skype, I can take it as, as a source, you know, that it would be like one cam, but you have four pictures, you know, and I can even switch it, you know, so if you need just the bass drums or just the top view, you know, you can ask me during the classes, I can change it whenever you want, I will um, I um, uh, record the videos, you know, I don't work by... Uh, 
uh, how is it by notes? No, is it notes in English? Notes, yeah. uh, you, you go by ear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I go, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell oh, you something. Ear? I'm gonna. We have something in common. Okay. We have yeah. something in common that that yeah. you yeah. you told us about today that I'm gonna tell you happened to me as well. Yeah. Okay. When I started playing the bass guitar for the first four, first six months, I was yeah. taking lessons and I was, you know, uh, basically, you know, learning by ear with the teacher. And he yeah. says, you know what? You've gotten so good at this point. Why don't you go home with the Iron Maiden records, play it by ear. And what I did is by the age of 15, I learned the entire Iron Maiden catalog by ear. I can play every single I you name an Iron Maiden song. I'll play it for you, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I know that. I know you can do it blind, <laughs> really. But <laughs> and yeah, overhand really. and blind. overhanded. Yeah, and overhanded. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I know that. You, you are fucking great, man, on the bass guitar. That's incredible what you're doing there. Thank you. And you, and already ten years ago, when I learned to know you, I was so impressed by you, your skills. You know that. You know that. I told you. That's the point. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for telling no, me that. Uh, you for don't being need to so honest. No. Yeah, but I told you already 10 years ago that you are incredible, man, on the bass guitar. That is, and, a, and an incredible person. You know, that it is just too sad seeing you suffering by this fucking mental health issues over all these years. You know, without them, I don't know where you would be. You know, I think this is a big limitation in your life you know this sickness for sure for a lot of people you know that would say probably oh no ah the guy is really good on bass guitar but uh he's too unstable in a, in a healthy I know, way I know, you know, I know, I know something like, you know i know, I know. that's I know. the point yeah, and that's the truth you know what i mean todd you you would be lying to me if you would tell me something different you know what i mean but i know you will always give your best in your possible that's the point right, because right. you are a fucking workaholic what what depends on playing bass guitar at least at least right right i and mean in real life in real life not a workaholic but on bass guitar for sure yeah on bass guitar for sure exactly as we are you know in real life i would also not be a workaholic but on yeah on my on my on my drum chamber or uh, on my drums in general yes in, in music in general you know that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, I was never the biggest practicing guy, you know, who was like practicing all day. No. And if I needed something for a song and I wanted to play it like that and I could not play it, I practiced as long as I needed to be able to play that, you know, and that's it. But I was never the guy like, oh, I would sit in the rehearsal room and I would play now this, uh, um, how do you say, um, oh my God, the English word again for that. What's like the, double the German, strokes, single strokes. Word? A single uh, stroke, still, yeah. Handsetzer. I don't know that one. Handsetzer, like double stroke, single Hand strokes, parodies. Yeah, right. How do you say in English for that? My God, I know the word. I just forgot it. So Not patterns. Uh, yeah. Paradiddles, right. par patterns, in, uh, structures. Oh uh, yeah, like, no, no, it has a special name. We're going to find it out. Somebody yeah. out there in the internet is going to find it. When they watch this video, help us out. Help Toman, Stelch, and myself to find out what is the word. We're going to play a little game for you now. It's going to be called What's the Word? All the drummers, all the drummers will be laughing their asses off you know, when they listen to that. And they see, look, man, he doesn't get that word, you know. Oh, my God. I use it in every drum class. You know what I mean? But I don't remember that at the moment. I'm getting, I'm really getting old. <laughs> we, we all are. And that's why we need jobs playing music today. That's the way. <laughs> yeah. Even if you're a little bit unstable, <laughs> take a chance. Take a so, chance. Let me, let me tell you now one thing about mentalist more that that i remember now on 28th of will be release date for freedom of speech mentalist debut album and you can now when you search on google for mentalist freedom of speech you will find a lot of um 
uh, source already where you where you can order the album now. The physical CD, like on Amazon, is present already now. Uh, there are several other sites. You know, I heard today from Peter that there are now online. I think since yesterday or today. And uh, yeah, it would be great if people really support us and they buy in the in the in these big portals you know, because they vote even for the for the charts you know so we probably have even a, a chance to get in the media control charts you know. who knows you know, great, great. You know, know. Yeah. it's a great it's a great message too right yeah. Yeah. if people want to support buy it directly after the release in that what do week. they what do and they want to push. buy what do they want to buy what do the people want to buy what new album when's it coming out what do they want to buy come on Let's go, Tommy. Come on, come on. That's the list. Freedom of speech. This is the fucking great album we did and we worked hard for in the last month. So support us and buy in the first week after release on the big portals like Amazon and whatever. You know, let me see what was written. Exactly. Or even let me see just a moment, my friends. Um. Should be here. In a few days, the album can be pre ordered at Amazon, EMP, and Nuclear Blast. They can order it and they are for sure important for the media control charts. You well. can buy the new so, Mentalist album on EMP. Amazon and what else? Nuclear Blast. The nuclear... nuclear Blast. So if you go to the Nuclear Blast website and you put in Mentalist, you're gonna find it and you will find the release date. You're gonna see when it's coming out. You better go out there. Don't go out there. Socially distance. Buy the album. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. Get the new <laughs> Mentalist. Listen to Toman Stouch's drumming. Toman the Omen. His Toman the Omen. I'm really proud of that album. Really, it's it's a uh, it became a really really good album. We put in a lot of work, and uh, Christian Moshes Mose from Space Lab Mixing in Fiersen, he did the mix for the album. Great old friend of mine, an ex drummer or still drummer for the band Avalon, uh, a progressive rock band in Germany. Great drummer, great producer, great engineer, and he did a fantastic mix for the album, really. I think, in, in my opinion, and not because I played that bad now, for me personally, really, it's my opinion, the best mix he ever did in his complete career, my opinion. Is it one of the best albums you've ever played on? One of the, yeah, for sure. One yes. of the best, for sure. Next time when we come yeah. back, we're going to talk about the best albums that you played on, your favorite drum tracks, your favorite fills, why you love yeah. to play the drums. Yeah. We will do that. That's a good thing, man. Good. So I Let's want to thank you, my legendary friend. <laughs> my legendary bass player and friend. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was really, really great to have your support on this video and for being able to tell all this to fans, our fans, you know. And what I want to say to all the is really important to, to thank you all for all your support over all those years and that you always believed in me you you followed my career over all those years if i had bad times good times it doesn't matter you are the best i love you all i have you deep in my heart and i will never forget you and i will always try to give my best with my best as a single musician for my tone drum chamber you rock i will always be with you and support you as long as you support me. Friends, great world, great fans. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend.
See you soon, my buddy. My See friend. you soon. <laughs>